Learn about some real use cases for vector search in SQL Server 2025 and see a cool demo this week on Data Exposed MVP Edition. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. We're going to get right into it to this MVP edition. Today, I have Joey uh, joining me. Uh, Joey, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, thanks, Anna. I'm Joey Dintoni. I'm a principal consultant and principal cloud architect, and I work with all sorts of cloud and data solutions. I've been working a lot with SQL Server 2025. Uh, you may have read some of the stuff I've written at redmondmag.com. Uh, talking about some of these. I actually wrote a column a couple months ago on vector search, which we're going to be talking about today. Awesome. Cool. Well, excited to learn more, and we'll definitely put a link to that uh, in the description if people want to go read it. Uh, for SQL Server 2025, obviously, there's uh, support for vector. But before we get into all that, like, I just want to get your take. Like, What mm -hmm. are people actually using vector for? And you know, what are you seeing with your customers or in the community? Yeah, there's so much buzz, good and bad, in, in IT world about AI and, and developers too. Uh, there are a lot of use cases that like don't necessarily make the most sense or might might be weird or impractical. But man, vector search is something that's really useful. So one of the things I was struggling with on the, the current project I'm on with a client, like I've actually implemented this in the last couple of weeks, is they they have kind of product catalog data and. One of the, the descriptions we have are really pretty short and they're not as you know high quality as we'd like. And one of the suggestions was maybe going out using agentic AI to enrich that data. And that's, that's really dicey because you're not inherently getting data from good sources. But when you have data already that's in your database and you've trusted it, what vector search can really enable you is to, to do like different searches that could be on full text. And I'll just give you a basic example of what we ran into. We had customers. Uh, we had a, a, a trial, a trial customer searching electric wire versus electrical wire, and they were getting vastly different results just based mm -hmm. on those the two character difference, or even in some cases with plural things. Because we were using, you know, full text search, the kind of normal thing, but full text search is imperfect. And, uh, no matter what database you're in, it's it's not really ideal. And while it was a little bit of a pain point to go through the vectorization process and adapt our code to that, it it has made our search way more accurate, uh, way more rich, and we, we had just have a lot more power to doing it. And frankly, there's not a whole lot of changes needed to your application. You can still have a stored procedure that's going to do that search. You have to make some changes to the stored procedure so that it does vectorization, but your app doesn't need to change at all, and you can plug in a whole new kind of search algorithm that's way more powerful. Awesome. Cool. So it's basically like improving your existing applications without having to do like a big re-architecture or redesign or anything like always that. the best way to do it right <laughs> absolutely cool well i'd love to uh you know learn so more about it just one math question for you what do you know about cosine distance <laughs> i mean i took geometry and you know know a little bit about it <laughs> yeah so i would like to thank bob ward who sent me some math advice on this uh, but the, the basic idea is that a smaller cosine distance is going to represent higher similarity to the search terms. If you want to learn way more about the math, you know, you can put it in Copilot. You can you can Google cosine distance and, and lots of geometry and trigonometry. But but that's about it. So, yeah, let's kind of get started with this demo. Uh, awesome. You can share my cool. screen. Let's take a look. Yeah. So the first thing I want to tell you is, and, and this I, I think I did reference this, this repository in my Redmond column. Uh, this is from a fellow MVP. I've contributed code to this as well. Uh, Anthony Nocentino has written this, and it's a full-on Docker solution that not only deploys a SQL 2025 container, but it's uh, running AdventureWorks LT, but it also deploys, most importantly, uh, an LLM embedding model called Olama, which is one of Meta's open source models. The cool thing about the really cool thing about this is you don't have to have anything else. A lot of the demos you'll see in, in, in books online and if you're using like Azure SQL database, you have to have an Azure resource, Azure AI Foundry resource that that does your converts that data into uh, into embedding. So let's let's kind of take a walk through that code, and and we'll look at, at kind of two different things. So if you download Anthony's code, the first thing you'll do is do a restore. Uh, we've already done that, but if you look here on the code I'm sharing on on lines 20, uh, 20 through thirty one. 
what we're doing, we're using some new syntax that's in SQL 25, and it's, it's also in Azure SQL DB, and we're creating an external model. Uh, you'll note the location is model-web. Let me pull up a terminal real quick. And if I do a Docker PS, you can see I have a llama fast start SQL one. I have a llama fast start model web. Uh, you need a couple of these containers and Anthony's code handles all of this for you. But the, the nice thing is your model's running locally and you don't have to pay anything, most importantly. Uh, so, so that is really nice. But uh, so we'll do initially just a test to make sure the model's working. Uh, Anna and I were talking about the fact that I have two execution arrows here. That's because I have both the Postgres and SQL Server VS Code extensions installed, both nice extensions, they could play better together. So here I can see an embedding, and this is what an embedding looks like. Uh, if you look at this code, what we did was embed the term test text. Uh, Olama, this, this version of Olama generates 768 dimensions. So if you were to copy this, you would see that there are 768 floats. Uh, that represents that text uh, as, as a vector. We also have a new data type in, in SQL Server called vector. And so here we're creating a table. I've, I've already created this table, but uh, you can see embeddings as a vector type. And that 768 is the dimension. It's a little bit weird uh, because it's not actually the data size. It's much larger than 768 bytes. That number represents the number of dimensions in that vector data. And so is there something you have to do specifically so that it works with, with the number of embeddings or when you generate the embeddings so that it fits? When, when you generate the embeddings, you have to know, and I forget how you do this off the top of my head. I don't know if you know, uh, the, the model will tell you how many dimensions there are. Yeah, I don't remember, like, because I, I ran into this when I was first playing with it. I was using uh, one of the OpenAI models on Azure. And I, I, was, I was like, I had a 768 column and I was, the model was coming out with 1530, uh, 1536, I think, is the number, is the, is double 768. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, it's it's based on the output of the the model. So whatever you're getting back. Did you know? Yeah, so here, like, we've created the embeddings for this. So if we look at this, uh, if we go ahead and run this query here, uh, we can see our embeddings. And you may be like, what's the use for this? And you can see here, we've built a chunk by... Con uh, Above here in, the, in this code, we've built a chunk by concatenating a bunch of columns. So if we look on line 66 and, and highlight the code I have here, we're taking the product name, uh, the category name, uh, another name, and the description and making that a chunk. In the case of, of my customer data that we're going to take a look at later, we're just taking the company name and the in the uh, the, pro the description and, and putting that into a chunk. Generally speaking, you're going to want to concatenate a few columns. We're not using it here, but another fun fact about SQL 2025 is you can do this and it can concatenate two columns. You no longer have to use a plus sign. The VS Code extension, I don't think has been updated or I'm on an older version, but you can use ANSI standard concatenation syntax. So here we can say, I'm looking for a red bike and I don't want to spend a lot. And we can see that we get a list of red bikes that, that are back. Uh, I don't have the price here, but presumably they're cheaper ones. We see this distance. As I mentioned, that lower number is better. We've also defined that here on line 89 by saying vector distance, uh, specifying cosine. We have a couple of other options that we can use. Most everything I've seen and done has used cosine distance. We're ordering by distance, that's ascending. Uh, we want that to be a little bit, uh, the lower number is better, so closer value. And of course, we have a top there. Uh, if you don't have a top with your order by, it's going to return everything. <laughs> also, we have one feature I'm going to show. We're not going to super demo because we'd have to go deep in execution plans. Uh, there's also a, a kind of a cool index type in SQL Server called a vector index. It uses something called disk AAN, which stands for near, approximate nearest neighbor. Uh, and it's just a little bit more efficient way of searching this data. I will say I'm not using those indexes in my current workload. I am using a, something else, and I'm kind of impressed. What I want to show you, though, is a little bit different, uh, similar code that we're using. So here, uh, 
you can see we're passing in a, a, a parameter that's just the search text. Then we're then we're generating embeddings for that search text. So remember, we have to compare the embeddings in the database to the embeddings from our from our search text. And so here we're doing the same thing where we're doing vector distance cosine, but instead of doing a top, I'm actually doing a vector distance in my where clause. And this is the data we've been working with this week with my client. And one of the things we've been balancing out, uh, the lowest number we've seen in the data is, is roughly about 0.22. And we've been balancing out quality of results mm. with that cosine distance number. So we started out at about 0.45, and we, we've decided to kind of adjust down to, to 0.37. So like here I'm searching titanium screws and at 0.37, I think this is gonna return about 50 results. Maybe I do need one of those fancy indexes. There we go. So we can see 0.99 is, or 0.29 is our lowest. Uh, and everything here is fasteners, uh, titanium fasteners. So all the various screw types. And if we go down to the bottom, we still see titanium dental implant components. So it's close enough to titanium screws that I, I feel pretty comfortable with that. Uh, beyond that, you start to kind of get into some weirdness with with how text, text reacts. So, And is this like 0.37? Like it's probably subjective depending on what it is that you're actually searching for, what your base is and how yeah. different types of results you're willing to accept. Is that fair? Sure. Or how did you come up with the 0.37? Uh, in this case, like in SQL Server does normalize those values, but in this case, it was really just trial and error. Mm -hmm. Uh, like it was, it was, we were kind of going, uh, we started that at, at, I can't remember where I started that. I, I think, I think I started that and I returned all the rows cause I was being stupid and didn't really think about what I was doing. And then, uh, then I put a where clause at like 0.5 and we looked at the, the bottom, you know, say 10% of the yeah. results, we could see they were really irrelevant. We got, we, we, and we just kind of gradually tuned that down in a few steps and, and we got down to three, eight, three, seven. It, it seemed like a happy spot. Awesome. Cool. Anything else you want to show us or tips and tricks or anything like that? Not so far. We're, we're, we're learning a lot as we go along. I, one of the things that's interesting about a llama is it's not the most accurate model. So if you're looking for really tight precision, I think there are better, bigger, newer models to use. But at the same time, it, it, I think in our use case, it's probably going to be enough for to generate high enough quality data and results that we don't feel the need to switch to anything else. And in like in in our production environment, we're running it in our Kubernetes cluster and just talking to it that way instead of not running it on a local machine or anything. Nice, awesome. That's super interesting to hear that like you've made you've gotten like good enough without having to go to some of the newer stuff. And I think mm -hmm. uh, you know we hear a lot of discussion about that, but. Hopefully that's good because it means people aren't going to have to be like updating once they deploy this out. Uh, they yeah, won't. I mean it's it's easy enough to update to a to a newer model because you can just switch in that in that database setting that we we looked at. But it's not it it, it really depends on your needs. If you you really need a bleeding edge model, uh, you know I I think for a lot of use cases where you're you're looking at things like product catalog data, it's it's going to be fine if you use an older model. Awesome. Cool. Well, Joey, thanks so much for coming on the show. I learned a lot. I think our viewers probably did too. Uh, viewers, if you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you're going to do with Vector Search and if you've tried any of these new capabilities in SQL Server 2025. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. Mm -hmm.